all right guys today we are going to be reacting to 19 things to to do in hamburg germany hamburg travel guide thank you so much for the support make sure you like and subscribe we're heading to 10,000 subscribers thank you so much for those that are subscribing i really appreciate it let's jump in good morning from a little bit of a chilly autumn morning here in hamburg i'm super excited to be back in the city to show you guys more of what there is to see and do i barely scratched the surface when i was here before but i am back to see the sights and share it all with you so let's go get some coffee i headed to a place called public coffee roasters and sat oh, wow. in the warmth of the cafe while i enjoyed a delicious flat white That is actually very beautiful. Wow. That is actually very beautiful. Look at the building. Wow. Then I wound my way through the streets until I reached the Binnenalster, or the Inner Alster. This man-made lake was originally created to serve as a reservoir for a nearby mill. You can now take a little boat trip around the lake if you'd like, but I was a little too early for that. Instead, I sat in the sunshine and then headed to the town hall where I was meeting a tour guide to take a city tour. The Rathaus, or town hall building of Hamburg, is the seat of the government of Hamburg as well as the seat of one of Germany's 16 state parliaments. Construction on this building began in 1886 and was completed in 1897. Wow. It's one of the few completely preserved buildings of this time period that remains in Hamburg. Why is that? What happened with the other ones? Got destroyed? The buildings of this time period that remains in Hamburg. Wow. Beautiful too. We toured around the city and even visited something that I have never seen before. A building called Leishof where we rode on a Pater Noster elevator. You can head in here yourself for free if you're passing by. It still functions as a normal office building. What the hell? Never seen this in my life. Never. Wow. Then we headed back outside to learn about the challenges the Hamburg port faces. A very important part, it's the third biggest in Europe. And the original port in the Middle Ages that was here, the so-called Nikolai fleet. What is, I like it when we have low tide, you see the Elbe, this is mouthing into the Elbe, and uh, the Elbe is mouthing into the North Sea. And we still have here in Hamburg the tides of the North Sea. The difference between high and low tide is three meters and 67, something like that, or 68, it changes. And what you see when we have low tide, it's really just here, uh, yeah. Uh, nothing and no water anymore. Nothing. It's really and that nothing. shows us also how difficult it is for the container ship. It's not that common. Of course, I've come down here. We have huge ports, let's say three kilometers westerly to Hamburg. And there are the huge terminals. But they all have a problem with high and low tide. The huge container ships can only come in with a high tide. No? We continued walking until we reached the remains of St. Nikolai Church. Wow. Never seen this one before. Wow. Look at that. Amazing folks. Which was bombed in 1943 during an air raid, which destroyed much of the city and surrounding area. But somehow the spire remained unharmed. is 174 meters high for three years it was the highest building in the world unbelievable but true but it is very high if you look at and well it has been destroyed during the second world war and uh, they thought what shall we do it with it we, uh, finally they left the ruin as a memorial oh, okay the they next stop on our walking tour was to walk along Dijkstrasse where you can stop into cute cafes for lunch or a coffee.
Hamburg is beautiful, folks. My God, very beautiful. I highly recommend Cafe Am Fleet, which is family run. Their coffee is strong and their apple cake is mm. divine. Look at that. Look at that, folks. Wow. You can also walk behind this row of restaurants to a small dock where sailors used to dock their boats wow. and head straight inside for a drink when they returned to shore. Oh, wow. This road leads you to a canal, which you can cross over and into an area called Hafen City, which used to be a huge part of the docks here in Hamburg until quite recently. Mm. Now it's packed with chic coffee roasters, cafes, and bakeries. One of the facts that our tour guide told us that I found really interesting was that if you have a business here in one of these buildings, your sign has to be in brass. That is something new. Okay. From here, you may want to stop for lunch. There are so many amazing places to eat in Hamburg, but after two trips here, Berliner Bahnhof ranks as the number one place that I've eaten in the entire city. The food is inventive, wow. beautifully presented. Look at the style, man. You cannot roll, go wrong with that style. It's a beautiful, minimalist style. Huh. But most of all, it is absolutely delicious. I had the fish with beetroot hummus and broccoli and plenty of roasted garlic mixed through. Be sure to try the pear bellini as well. If you like art, head near the main train station to a newly opened art space called Jupiter. Before 2020, it was actually a department store, but oh, the city really? has repurposed it into a free space with each floor home to a different exhibit wow. from local artists. Yeah, that's that's actually very good. That's a good, a very good idea. Just to make sure some of the local artists can expose their arts. That's perfect. I'll take it. While you're in Hamburg, you have to get out on the water. On my first trip here, my friend Alex and I took a ferry up and down the Elbe, which was a very cheap way to explore the river. On this trip, we headed out on a complete harbor tour. One of the best ways to spend an evening in Hamburg is to see a show at the Elbe Philharmonie. Yeah, let's this go. This building is absolutely stunning, both inside and out. The exterior was designed to look like a hoisted sail or a water wave. You know, like, like it look for me, it looks like a king crown. Look like a crown, right? Doesn't look like a, something from the sea. It looks like a crown. If you don't want to see a show or you don't have the time, you can head to the plaza area to enjoy the views. There's a bar there where you can grab a glass of wine or a beer and take it out on the balcony and look out over Hamburg. But the Grand Hall, where I watched a concert, is unlike any music venue I have ever been inside before. Good morning from a rainy Hamburg here along the Elbe. I am about to head into the miniature Wunderland. It's one of the most visited <laughs> tourist sites here in Hamburg, apparently in Germany. Um, so I'm excited to check it out. I think it's been pretty cool. In the world too. I mean, having a miniature Wunderland is impressive. Folks. It's a lot of work. Let's go. Unsurprisingly, the museum is absolutely packed on a rainy Saturday morning. <laughs> uh, so you need to reserve a time slot, uh, which I did not do because I didn't know. <laughs> so be sure to do that, especially if you're visiting uh, on a weekend. But the cool thing is that the museum is open until one o'clock in the morning on Saturdays. So I'm gonna go tonight, go to time slot while I was there. And uh, yeah, we'll get a second chance at it. So. 
Let's go get some coffee instead. What a beauty, man. Look at that. I ended up going for a walk ah, instead man. and discovering a Beautiful church and bell tower that were well worth the morning confusion. I am here at St. Michael's Church, which is, we'll brave the rain for a minute, a Lutheran church with a bell tower that is 132 meters tall. Wow. Uh, I think That's it can high. go up, but it's a little bit cloudy as you can see <laughs> so i'm not sure it's going to be worth it for the views however the clock tower at the top of the bell tower but that's on the outside of the bell tower is the largest in germany so there's some facts for you really like is the highest building in germany i don't think so. That's beautiful. And I think that's real gold too, right? I think this is real gold. Afterward, I stopped for lunch at Astra Brewery in the St. Pauli neighborhood, which does some great food and even better beer. The IPA was my personal favorite, but you'll find the lager all over the city. Oh, oh my God. It was the perfect fuel for what ended up being the best thing that I did during perhaps both of my trips to Hamburg, the Beatles tour with Stephanie Hempel. A huge part of pop music history took place here in Hamburg. Okay, folks. What is, what is going on here? Why the graffiti? Can someone explain in the comment section below? I will, I will love to know why it, this is looking like this. And it all happened in this very special area, the old red light area of Hamburg. And I always say this big word, pop, mu pop music history, of course the Beatles, they are pop music history and they kind of changed and shaped everything in the 60s, what we call pop music now. Starting with that a band writes their own material. No band really before did that. The Beatles kind of started that in 1962. I also say this big word because the Beatles were not the only ones here in the early 60s. Uh, the area uh, of St. Pauli in the early 60s was full of British bands, especially mm. bands from Liverpool. <laughs> but the Liverpool bands... Bro, the those area are, of those are, are those gang signs? Are, are these gang signs? Let me know in the comment section. St. Pauli, the clubs here, this was their first chance to earn good money with their music. And their music in 1960, when they came here for the first time, was not original music. It was rock and roll covers. So the bands mm. were all booked to play rock and roll from the 50s, to play Elvis, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Gene Vincent, Buddy Holly, for the rockers, sailors, and gangsters in St. Pauli. That was their main audience in the beginning. Mm. This tour has ah. a lot of live music, history, interesting facts, and amazing stories about a band that, thanks to my dad, I grew up listening to. I'll link to the tour information in the description below. We learned about the first clubs they played in, the tiny rooms where they slept, how much they really grew up in this city. If you love the Beatles, you should really take this tour. Of course, oh. I couldn't forget to get back to the miniature museum from Look at that broad, man. Look at that broad. That's a real one. Look how look at how big that thing is. Oh my god. For my 9 p.m. appointment. So I grabbed a bratwurst and headed over to see whether it was worth the hype and the 16 euro price tag. It's certainly a fascinating place. Even at 9 p.m. it was still packed with people but I'm happy I got to experience it. You could easily spend hours here looking in at all the details of each miniature city that's been created. The next morning, I was up bright and early for one last coffee and snack, a traditional pastry here in Hamburg called Franz Brocken. Franz Brocken. 
It's like a croissant mixed with a cinnamon roll. Oh my it's god. It's heavenly. Wow, that had with coffee in the morning, that has a taste amazing. Oh, I mean my wife will love this. My wife will love this. My god, that looks insanely good. And a lot easier to eat than it is to pronounce. Well, I believe you. <laughs> it has been an awesome trip to Hamburg. I'm all packed up here and just about to head to the airport to head back home. I highly recommend a trip to Hamburg. Uh, my second visit here, I still feel like there's so much to see and do. Uh, I'll definitely be back to this city. Between the nightlife, the food, the culture, the waterfront, the running trails, the it's boat a lot. trips, the it's museums, a lot. <laughs> there is so much to do in Hamburg. I really recommend it. If you like big cities, uh, if you want to get to know a different side of Germany, if you just want to come to a really cool city and have a great night out while you're in Europe, uh, Hamburg is the, the place. place. To go. Right. So. I hope you enjoyed traveling around Hamburg with me. If you did, please give this video a hey, shout out to her, man. She did a very good job. It seemed like she really enjoyed her trip to Hamburg and very impartial, very straightforward to the point. She showed a lot of these things that I haven't seen. That big church that what was bombarded during World War II. Bro, that's beautiful. Why they didn't reconstruct it? I mean, that's part of your history. I, I, I would just put money on that or build it back again. That was beautiful, man. And that pastry at the end. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was amazing. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, let me know what you guys see in the comment section below. I would love to hear more of you guys' opinion about Hamburg. Let me know what is going on with the graffiti down um, in the floor. That's kind of, you know, I don't know about you guys. But the graffiti, even if it is a very arty area, I don't think it comes. It's not welcoming. Well, let me know what you guys think. I will see you in the next one.